So the last sort of uh, quick start uh, video that I want to do here before we jump into lab one is just show you uh, one way that we can import data into R. So there are many different ways that we can do it. So first we can generate it by hand. Uh, we've done a little bit of that so far by generating sequences of vectors. Um, in the uh, course, we're going to be using the source method, which is related to sort of what we just showed in the last video, where we can sort of pull data from different sources, either from the internet or from our directory, and import that into our environment. Um, but this one, I just want to show, you know, an example of downloading a CSV file, .csv, and uh, import that into R. And so that can be from any method. So if we have Excel, if we have, um, you know, Google Sheets that we're looking at here, if someone sends you a CSV, et cetera, it's super easy. So um, if we have this data here, which is just, you know, data prices of gold and silver, um, I don't know the currency, maybe US dollars. I just found this randomly <laughs> online. Um, but uh, if we have this data in a spreadsheet, we can go ahead, do file, download as a CSV, so comma separated values. It's going to download here as a CSV. And then all we have to do is head over to RStudio. Let me just get rid of that there. And all we got to do is come to import data set up here in the environment. And then we're going to go from text reader. R E A D R. And so the first time that you do this, we're going to need to install some packages to be able to do so. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and click yes. Just going to install a package. And again, you only ever have to do this once, so don't worry about having to do it again. Also, they don't take up much space at all, um, but uh, they are really helpful. So um, this does it for you, so you don't even have to think about it. Now here, uh, we've gone ahead and installed all the packages to use Reader. Um, so now it's going to ask for the file or URL, so you can type in the URL here. But uh, for the purposes of this, we're just going to do the CSV. So you can browse for it on your computer. And then uh, we're going to go ahead and click this one here, which is the sheet uh, that we just downloaded uh, a second ago. So we're going to double click. It's going to retrieve the preview. And it actually is going to tell you or show you what it's going to look like. So you can see if this is uh, importing the way you would expect. So we successfully have our column here, gold, the other column silver and then uh, this column is just called one and the reason why it's called one and this is something you'll see a lot is because uh, we actually uh, don't have a name in this column so I'll show you how to fix that in just a second but so coming back to our studio this looks like it's gonna um, sort of uh, import the way that we're hoping to so we can go ahead and click import now what it's gonna be saved as is under data rather than you know values or something like that the name of the sheet so gold silver prices underscore sheet one it's going to be same thing here gold silver prices underscore sheet one now say that's uh we want to shorten the name of that so we can sort of work um in a, an easier way without having to type that out we could just do data equals and then the name of that sheet so gold silver and see it already popped up in this little menu here so instead of having to type the whole thing out we can just hit tab and then go ahead and hit enter so now we see that uh, all of the data that's in this here so gold silver prices etc is saved in this object called data and if we want to clean up our space we can do remove and then we can do gold gold silver prices and get rid of that. So now we just have data. So um, with data here, we can see what's sort of in the uh, data frame by doing first str data, which gives us the structure of data. 
And so this tells us that there's three different columns, one that's just you know blank with the column number one, then one called gold, and then one called silver. And so if we come back to the spreadsheet, that's exactly what we would see over here. So uh, that's really helpful to know. Uh, and we can also tell that by sort of typing data, doing the dollar sign. And the dollar sign essentially says within a given set of data, what uh, variables or column names do I want to access? So it uh, allows us to autofill by uh, sort of picking any of these with our mouse. So we gold, silver, or one. Um, so if we click gold, it'll uh, automatically put it in there for us. And if we hit enter, it'll show us all of the different data with that. And so this is how we're going to manipulate all of our data. Eventually, when we import things, we have to put this dollar sign, and then we can do interesting things with a given column. Great. So the last thing I want to do here when we're importing the data um, is essentially rename a column. Um, so what we can sort of uh, do here is come over to data, click on this, and we can actually view our data. So all I did was just either click on the plus sign or you can click on this whole row, but I can view the data as it actually is. So similar to how in a spreadsheet, I can just sort of look through, scroll through and things along those lines. I do the same thing in R. So I'm looking at data and I have my three columns and the each row, so row one, in this case, corresponds to the row two here. Um, just because it's treating the original row one in the spreadsheet as the names and things along those lines. But I can, you know, scroll through and look at this. But uh, like we noticed when we were over here and when we input the data, the first column is just given a generic name by R, i.e. it's unknown, so it's dot 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 one, because in the spreadsheet there is no name for it. So we can actually go ahead and um, build up an understanding of how to change uh, the name of it, column one, by doing the following code. So let's first start by just printing data. So this is just the data set that we just um, loaded. So we see that it's going to go ahead and show us the uh, date here um, that's unnamed, right? So it just knows that this is a date type, but this is the name up here. Then we have the double. So again, a double is just anything that has um, a decimal point, any integer that has a decimal point. And uh, we have the name gold and silver up here. So we want to change this dot 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 one to date. So what we can do is first see the names of the variables by doing names open parenthesis data. So these are the three of them. So this is the exact um, wording of the first column name. We're going to put that here. So now what we're going to do is add the second part in the brackets. And so what this is saying is essentially within this data, uh, the, the names of the data, so these three names of the data, it, we're going to say which one of those is equal to this uh, exact value here. And so it's easier to just kind of show you, well, when we do names of the data, there's three here, and then we're going to take the subset of those column names and s specifically select the one that uh, is named this. So the double equal sign is a logical operator that says the thing on the, light, or the left is logically equivalent to the thing on the right. So in this case, we're saying, well, we only want the one name from the data that is called this. And when we hit enter, we see that it's selecting that name here. So now, sort of doing that conceptual uh, hard work, we can just set that value equal to dates. So we ran that. Now when we go to data, we see that we have successfully renamed dates. So gold and silver were already there, but dates is here as well. Now let's say we wanted to make gold and silver capitalized. So we're going to do names again, data. When we look at this, we see dates, gold, and silver. So 
we want to first change gold. So what we're going to do is do a bracket, names, data. And then we're going to say, well, out of all of the names data in the data, we're going to set them logically equal to gold. And we're going to put quotes around it. And so when we run this, we've seen that we've successfully selected, so to speak, gold, the gold column. And now we're just going to rename it in quotes, gold. See that this has gone from lowercase to uppercase. We'll do the same thing with silver. And just like that, we have our columns renamed. Great. And so I know that that probably was a little confusing. And so in a future video, we're going to uh, specifically talk about this command here, where we're doing uh, the index of a particular uh, variable or data set or things along those lines. However, hopefully you can sort of see that we're sort of pulling up the names from the data set from the columns. We're then selecting one with this command here, specifically selecting the one that's exactly written like this, and then we're just writing over it as if we're writing over a typical variable.